Hey guys, it's James. In my last video, I installed the 4.27 silent board on my Ender 3. If you haven't seen that video already, go ahead and check it out here before you check out this video because this is going to be a part 2 to that video where I will be compiling and uploading the firmware to the 4.27 silent board. Because this is going to deal with firmware which oftentimes is going to be updated and upgraded often. Uh, by the time you watch this video, it may be already outdated. Uh, that does not mean that you cannot use this firmware. Oftentimes beginners will want to just get the latest version, latest upgrade version of firmware. However, your board may not even support the upgrades that the firmware releases. Use one that works and is very stable. By the time you advance into the 3D printing space, you will get more familiar with all of the firmware and you will be able to compile and upload your own version of firmware. I will be configuring and compiling the firmware to the printer that I have. Um, so I'm going to mention the upgrades on my printer, which is an Ender 3. It's going to be a 4.27 silent board with a 3.1 version BL Touch, a Micro Swiss Direct Drive, with an all metal hot end. So if you have your printer in the same configuration as mine, you can just upload the compiled firmware automatically to your printer. It's gonna be hassle free and it's gonna work. If you're intermediate or advanced, you're probably gonna be able to compile and upload your own firmware. But you can still stick around and you might be able to find some of the settings that you may need to uh, configure your own firmware. One of the things I don't like about the 4.27 board is that it comes with a bootloader already installed, uh, but that bootloader does not allow for you to uh, make a direct connection via the USB cable. You have to use the micro SD card and upload the firmware that way. This makes it very time consuming if you wanna figure out some of the variables on the firmware. So that was uh, one of the frustrations with this board. It's just um, very time consuming to take this SD card in and out, in and out. But I can tell you right now, the board makes the motors very, very silent, uh, which I thoroughly enjoy. And it is definitely a good board. One of the places you can go is to this official Creality website to download the firmware. They have the printer type and with the BL Touch. But most people don't like getting the firmware from the official site. Many people find the source to be broken. So I'm going to give you another place. You want to go to the Marlin website. You can download this bug fix zip 2.0 and then we're going to also download the configurations. And go here, download zip and then just going to rename it. I'm going to go ahead and extract them. We're going to extract the configurations. So we're going to go into the configurations folder. And then we're going to look at the examples and then go to Creality. Select the printer that you're using. I'm using an Ender 3. I'm going to use a Creality version 4.27 board. I'm going to get this. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then I am going to go to my original Marlin bug fix. And I'm going to be replacing these uh, configuration files with the ones that I copied. 
Go ahead and replace the files. Now, once that's done, we're going to go to VS Code. You want to go to this Visual Studio Code, and then you want to download based on your operating system. I have a Windows 10, so I've already downloaded it. You want to download and install this file. I'm going to open up the Visual Studio Code. I have this platform IO already installed. If you're new to Visual Studio Code, you're not going to have this installed. So you're going to go here to the extensions. And then on the search bar, you're going to type in platform IO. It's going to have an install button just like this one right here. However, I've already installed it. That's why mine does not have it. And I have the icon right here. Once you've installed the platform IO, the icon is going to show up right here. Just click on that. And then we're going to click on this open. I'm going to close the welcome screen. And then we're going to import the Arduino project. We're going to go to that folder where you have the bug fix firmware root directory marlin bug fix 2.0 x the root directory and in it you're going to see the platform io ini and you're going to see the marlin folder you want to import it into this folder right here the root directory again you're going to see this right here and the directory for the marlin and we're going to select the board we're going to select the 18 mega 2560. Select this board right here. Use libraries installed by Arduino IDE. And we're going to click on import. Once you're done, you're going to see this uh, folder. We're going to go down here to the platform IO INI. I'm going to select that. You're going to find the default environment. And then you want to type in this right here. You want to type in this right here. STM32F103RET6 underscore Creality. So again, for you beginners that don't know about coding or like um, how this firmware works, Basically, you have a comment right here. All these are comments. This doesn't get compiled into the firmware. Um, they use this right here, the asterisk and the forward slash to contain all this comment. So this is for general reading. So you can read it and get a description of what um, everything means. These are like the notes that the programmer or the developer uses to get you familiar with what all these mean. This is a single line comment right here, double slashes. You can see that this is defined and this is going to be run or compiled into the code. But if you actually do a double four slash, this is going to be commented out. If you remove the comments, that means that the code is enabled. This is, I define the author string. I change the configuration. This is for the Ender 3, BL Touch version 3.1, Microsoft SD, and all metal hot end. So you're going to define the serial port 2 and change it to 3. You can change this to any of the ports that you're going to be using for the printer, but the, by default, usually it's going to be number 3. Also, I change out the baud rate. The motherboard is defined right here. The board Creality 4.2.7. And it has a custom name. If you want to give it a custom name, you can do that. Change this value out. For the 4.2.7 board, we have the TMC2225. 
but it says right here to use the TMC 2208 drivers. So again, it's defined right here, TMC 2208 standalone. Find the search bar and type in whatever text that you need. Like the BL touch. And you can see it's highlighted. Once you define the BL touch, of course, you're going to have to define the offsets. So we're going to go to the nozzle to probe. Okay, here we go right here. Nozzle to probe offsets. And these are my values right here. Negative 43, negative seven, negative five. I've also defined the margin to 30. Actually, this can also be, um, I'm going to switch it out to 25. If you need to change the speed of your probes, uh, you can do that here. It's millimeters multiplied by minutes. So it's a rate. It's millimeters per minute. 133 millimeters per minute. And then again, these are all defined, which means that they're going to be compiled. Make sure that these are defined also. And I switch this value to 10. And then let's go auto bed level, auto. Again, these are just all comments. You can read about it and see which type of bed you want to define or enable. And I define the auto bed leveling by linear. You also want to define this restore leveling after G28. The bed is defined, the size is at 235, 235 and travel limits. Th these are the values I define for the travel limits for based on the end stop positions. Negative two, negative 12, zero plus 19, negative 10, and 250. Your values might be different. You're gonna to have to check and verify with your printer. Some other things you might wanna take a look at is safe homing. It's been defined. This at section homing is a safety feature. Uh, you may want to enable this. However, I have it disabled on my version. If I do enable something, the only thing I want to enable is probably this one right here. I personally like having the printer head move before homing. So I've actually disabled this, but this is something you might want to consider enabling these right here. Um, these are something that you really want to go ahead and take a look at once you have time. And just go through them and see what all these mean. Um, I can't go through all of them and there's no reason to go through all of them. The best thing to do is go look for it on Google and find out what you need. Do a find right here, do a search and then enable or disable whichever components that you need. And the best place you're going to get the information is from the official Marlin website. And you're going to be able to do a search also right here and you're going to be able to Go ahead over here to the options available and see which items you have to enable or disable for your printer to work correctly. So there's a lot of information on here. The best thing to utilize is the search on both ends of the Marlin website and the Visual Studio Code. And then do a Google search and see what components that you need to enable or disable on your printer. Once you're finished, you're going to click on this checkbox right here. It says platform IO build. Once you click on that, it's going to start compiling and spit out your firmware. This is going to actually take a little bit of time. Go grab yourself some coffee. Once it says success right here on the status, we're going to go to this bug fix folder. Marlin, Marlin. We're going to go to .pio, 
build STM32 F103 RET6 Creality and from there we have the firmware right here you have the date and the number of the uh, actual file it has an extension of .bin you're going to go ahead and copy this paste it in your micro SD card you're going to plug in the micro SD card in your printer when the firmware is being uploaded you're going to see a blank LCD screen there is going to be a delay in when you're going to see the Marlin logo and that's how you're going to know that the firmware has been uploaded if the firmware is not uploading to your printer you're going to see an automatic the Marlin logo pop up as soon as you turn on the printer so that's the visual that you want to look for to know if your firmware is being uploaded to your printer so guys that's it you have completed uploading your new firmware to your printer now I will be adding this particular configuration to my own github page based on the type of response I may be adding more configurations to this particular build I hope you were able to get a understanding of how to compile and build your own firmware also I may be adding a follow-up video to this on some troubleshooting tips so if you have any questions leave it in the comments below uh, thanks guys I uploaded my own firmware to the github page and this is the extension for this current build you're gonna go and download this right here let me just paste this in right here we're gonna extract it and then I have the firmware compiled right here you you can use this bin file and stick it into your micro SD card or if you want to compile your own you can just copy this and then go to your Marlin bug fix folder Marlin and just paste this in here it's very much the same process as you saw before and then again you want to open up your Visual Studio this is the same process you saw in the beginning of the video so this is straight off the build I'm doing a 200 by 200 millimeter grid that's being printed via the SD card this is just to give you a visual on what the grid looks like on the bed if you have any problems you are going to have to adjust the margins and the travel limits on your printer if i find this configuration is not working properly i will be updating the firmware in my github repository